Right, I'm going to show you now what's causing us our, our issues with the buzzards. So, we're on our setup there, as you can see. There's our little hockey ground hide. And this is our buzzard setup. Oh, <laughs> shit! <laughs> Just tripped over it, guy. Line. <laughs> what a nugget. Right. So there's our, our buzzard setup. Okay, now I nearly broke my neck then. Right. So we've got a bank in here, and then we've got another field. And this is where that sheep carcass is. What the buzzards have taken a right shine to. So let's have a look. Here we go. That is disgusting. So there. There we have it. One dead sheep. Absolutely horrible. The bait that I'm putting down looks much nicer. But yeah, so what we're gonna do, that edge line there, we're gonna put that hockey ground eyed up. Now we're gonna move it and then tomorrow. I'm going to come down and have a do. So, that's the plan. That looks revolting. You wouldn't think there were anything else on it to eat, would you? But they obviously favour that. So that's what we're going to uh, that's what we're going to do. That's the plan. So we're going to set it up here, I've just brought it back a little bit, I don't want to get too close to them really, because what they do, they land on that fence line as well, so there might be a chance of getting a few shots on there, but just something to bear in mind, they have all these dead nettles here, so I'm just going to move them out of the way. Yeah, like I said on the last film, just be mindful that everything is right, once you're in the hide, you don't want to, you don't want to be getting out again and spooking anything. So. Once I get in here, I want to make sure that them nettles are clear and out of the way so that if they do land on that fence line, I've got a chance of a decent shot of them. So. There you go. Shifted. It literally took five minutes. I just unpegged it, lifted it up with the, uh, the mat and the blanket inside it and just moved it all in one. Didn't even have to, you know, drop it back down. So. That is our secret weapon tomorrow. Tragapan Hockey V3. What a what a good hide. This is quickly becoming my favourite hide. It's just, I don't know, it's snug. And uh, it's not the comfiest thing, but it's never going to be, is it? Look at the size of it, it's tiny. Uh, but it's all right and it keeps the warmth in as well. So uh, <clears throat> that's our, our plan tomorrow. There's the carcass. The posts are clear, I've shifted them nettles now and everything should be alright. We're going to get down here in the dark. I'm just toying with the idea of whether to just go and find a stump and put a stump out in the field just in case, you know, in case they land on it because I've got a nice, nice background there. A nice, you know, clear background so I could get some, uh, some pretty good shots really, to be honest. So I might just nip down into that bit of a, bit of a woodland there. There's a lot of uh, nice mossy stumps and uh, logs and that so I'll, I'll see but it's just uh, again it's having a little plan B you know if they're not uh, playing ball and landing on that carcass how I want them you know they might just land on one of these stumps so I've shifted all the bait that I had down on my setup so there's nothing for them to go down there for that was the issue you know I'd, uh, same scenario with them acorns like I was telling you you know if you've got one setup in mind don't have don't have you know three or four different setups with with acorns and you know nuts or whatever um, just try and isolate your subject 
down to one particular spot and the same as, as proved with these buzzards you know they had the option of coming down onto that setup with the bait that I put down or they had the option of this grotty old dead sheep and they opted for that so tomorrow I'm hoping they opt for the same so we'll see we'll see what happens so we'll see you in the morning Oh, it's a chilly one this morning. I haven't put my neoprene no toe protectors on. I've got my electric socks on this morning, but they <laughs> they're good. But they only warm the bottom of your feet. It's not the bottom of my feet. They get cold. It's the toes, and I still have some left actually. Didn't really fall, but you knew that anyway. Beautiful morning, absolutely beautiful. Hope we get some photos here. Success. Oh, flipping out. That were a cold morning. That were what we done. It's two o'clock now. We're in here at half past six. So, but we got the shots we wanted. We got the buzzer down, albeit for twenty minutes. But uh, yeah, fantastic. I'm well chuffed with that. We got the shots on that carcass, which is what we were after. It'd have been lovely to have got some on them posts, but uh, they weren't that obliging. There's two set. <laughs> as I got out of the hide, this is another thing to learn. As I got out of the hide and kind of stood up, there was a roebuck stood in the field, and I've seen him a couple. Of, I saw him earlier on this morning through the, the side opening. Beautiful. He's all his antlers are in velvet, so he's next on the on the hit list I'm going to uh, I'm going to have a do for him I think so that's the plan I know they go in that bit of a clearing in that in that woodland where I've managed to capture him before so that's uh, that's another little project we'll try and get him before his his antlers lose all that velvet so a bit of a, a lesson in patience and how this kind of dictated what we were doing today because the other day when we were trying to get them down onto onto that setup of mine, they weren't having it. They were going for that skanky old really sheep skeleton. So um, we dragged it across the field, put it down there, and uh, as luck would have it, they come down again today, which were brilliant. So some nice shots, some a bit a bit different, you know. Just be mindful of where you're putting your hide. That's why I've used this, uh, you know, the low down the hockey hide because the proper twitchy and um, you know kind of kept it in line with the uh, with the hedge line so it wasn't too obtrusive when you look from down there you can see how how small a profile they've got if I'd have used the uh, the v6 or the you know the that v2 that I've got the mono it would have been too big I think it would have stood out too much you know I, it might even have been better if I 
pushed it into the hedge right up against the um, against the fence line, but you can only get in one side, so that would have made it a little bit difficult. But as it was, it um, no, it worked out all right. It was good, and uh, the light, the the light still uh, still shining out, and it's it's just after two o'clock, so it's been a grand day. Cold, but uh, yeah, it's been a good one. So, so for anyone anyone that's thinking about you know maybe getting a hide, um, specifically the hockey. They look tiny. They, they, they do. They look, they've got a fantastic low profile, which is obviously, you know, the, that's what they're all about. But it's surprising the amount of room that there is inside them. I mean, I'll show you this. What I've got set up at the moment. So at the moment, this is everything I need. I can do an overnighter in this, uh, and there'll be, there'll be, you know, I've got enough equipment to easily stay overnight. So down at the bottom. I've got my, uh, my camera bag, so that's a decent sized bag, that's a 36 litre, uh, my mind shift bag, and that get, that holds everything, so that tucks away down at the bottom. We've got, I've got my, my bivvy bag, which just gives me an extra, extra layer of warmth. I've got my jacket. I've got a bag for all my vlogging stuff and food, flasks, another another camera bag. Camera. Like I said, I've got two bean bags down here. Try not to kneel in open mud. But you get the picture anyway. I've got a multi mat down, a uh, blanket, I've got binoculars in there, flask. There's loads of uh, loads of room. They're just deceiving, you know, they're they're not comfortable, don't get me wrong. They're uh, you know you know about it when you've done six or seven hours in one, but you can spin round, you've enough room to spin round, straighten your back out. That's the thing as well. The good thing about about this camera, this is a, the D500, I've got this uh, this flip screen. So you know occasionally rather than keep you know craning your head back like that you can just you know utilize the tilt screen on it which uh, yeah it's a bit of a lifesaver is that but um, no I'd highly recommend them if you're thinking of getting one you can use a discount code Tragapan have contacted me and they'll offer any uh, anyone that's viewing this they'll offer them a five percent discount so I'll put that in the uh, in the description below so it's just Trago Simon 5 and when you when you go to Tragapan and you're, you're filling out your order, there's a discount code box. Just you know, fill that in, and you'll get five percent off. So that's all right, isn't it? Nice one, right? Hiya, how we did, Lynn? Right, this morning we're off to uh, try and we're we'll gonna have another do with these buzzards. Because last time I come, we got a bit of footage. And I wanted a bit more, so we're going to move the hide. We're going to put it under the edge. So last time I cleared, I cleared under the edge a bit, and I moved that sheep carcass. Now I've not been down for five days. Weather's turned cold again. Put a bit of snow down yesterday, but it's kind of gone really. So it'd be nice if that had hung about. But when I come down last time, they pretty much, well, they've decimated that sheep carcass. So I'm hoping it's still there. And I've got some bits of meat, some scraps, and I'm going to put it like in the carcass, if you will, just to keep them interested. See the buzzing there, it's just took off. So they're still knocking about. They'll be struggling at the moment. Proper cold. Right, we're here. Here we're here in position. This is where we're gonna we're gonna put hide. But I'll explain that in a minute. But sheep carcass is still here. Let's. Uh, here's a bag of stuff we've got. Let's have a look. Oh, they've had a right good day with it. Hey, right. <laughs> Not a lot left, but uh, hey, don't matter. Got it frozen solid. 
but it's just nice it, you know that rib cage it looks it looks cool so I, I got a few pictures last time and they were all right you know they were I was pretty suited with them and you know it came down that's the main thing in it but the majority you know there's bits of meat left on it some you know left on its head I mean it take more than a bit of mint sauce and uh, some Yorkshire puddings for me to tackle it so <laughs> I've just brought some uh, they're just meat off cuts they're off cuts from butchers you know and it works they'll uh, they'll come down no problem for this so all I'm gonna do just a bit of bit of trickery if you will I'm just gonna stuff some down here I don't want to I don't want to see it from the uh, from the pictures that I get you know I'll, I'll put a bit behind here where it's hidden and it'll just get them down and they'll you know they, whether they feed on this or whether they feed on you know the rest of the the sheep I don't know but uh, who knows but they'll appreciate this in this weather because it's cold they'll not be getting much much grub you know so oh, it's rock hard that stuff a bit under there bit under there a bit under the head and uh, I don't know I mean I'll just put some loose bits down because when I come down in the morning most of it will probably have gone and that's it and they'll see that from you know wherever they're perching today and they'll come down and, uh, and say in the morning we'll put a bit more down if we need it we might not but uh, we've got it haven't we if we need it so I'm just going to wrap that up I'm going to put it back in the hide and uh, yeah we'll come down early doors see if we can get some more pictures eh right let's get this hide set up first thing First thing, get some gloves on. Stop the old digits freezing up. Right, so I've cleared this. I've cleared under this area. I've also trimmed a little bit of this uh, Orthorn stuff down. Uh, when you're working under Orthorn, because I haven't put my decent jacket on, I've just put my scratchy old camo on, because uh, they'll just rip your jacket, they're horrible Orthorn thorns you know some big nasty snarly ones watch your hands and all because they can uh, you know you get infected you get thorns in your hands so and just be mindful of what you're putting your eye down on that's why I use this you know I like putting my footprint down it's not going to completely save you but it stops you getting cacked up and all so I'm just gonna bob this down like I said it'll just you know it'll afford it a little bit of protection probably insulates you from cold as well any bits just bend that back in so I don't want to damage my hide I'm going to take these off, a bit hard work with them on. Right. Yeah, I do like this hide. So it's becoming one of my favourite ones, to be honest. Because for this kind of stuff, you know, for uh, subjects that are dead twitchy, it's just nice having that really low profile. Look how quick it is. proper quick to to put up and this new camo it's like an autumn like a, a bit of a darker one than the mornal but you can um, you know if uh, like if it's snowy you can put a, a camo net over the top I know probably a few of you will follow Espen, Espen Helland on YouTube, he's just put one on about camo nets and in particular ones that you can get from, from Tragapan who make this hide. 
and to do something like double sided so you can get like a woodland dark camo on one side and then on the other it's white and especially in this particular kind of weather at the moment you know with that dust in the snow on the ground surprising it can make a big difference yeah I was saying about things you know being twitchy and even the other day on the uh, on the first bit of this film I was just letting the hide and uh, I looked out this side window and I saw a roe deer now this particular roe deer the uh, female I've been watching her for the last couple of years and I'm really surprised that she survived to be honest because she's got a really damaged back leg the back knuckle on her leg is um, I don't know whether she's broke it or whether it's got infected but she really struggles to uh, to move on it and she saw me she clocked me because the hide was uh, about here you know it was it was out in the field a bit not uh, not right up against the hedge like I've got it now and she saw it and it was obviously something different than what she's used to seeing straight away it clocked me and there was no movement you know it was just the the profile of the hide and it's something different so it's something to to bear in mind you know when you are setting up a hide in a new location maybe bring it down a few days in advance you know I mean I'd, I don't like leaving hides out because even though this is a private permission you know people there's loads of people knocking about and then they lift this in in no time so it's I don't know that's that's your own personal preference you know whether you want to take the risk or not of leaving it that particular night I'd you know I'd left it the night before and uh, you know it was still here in morning which were we're good and I'm leaving this here today it's going back in morning but like I say when you you're positioning hides always a good idea really to put it up beforehand and let your subject get accustomed to it and uh, you've more chance than I think but uh, yeah down to security in it and safety whether you want to risk it because <laughs> you'd be gutted if you come back and it weren't there but it's one of them so let's finish off get this up right we've got the gear we've got what we need Richard gear right Let's have a look. There you got it. Right. It looks overkill this, doesn't it? But it's only an inch that, something, something like that. It makes a massive difference, honestly. Just keeps that warm pocket of air between you and the ground. So we'll get that in. There's nothing clever about being cold. It's rubbish. Ready. Right. So bean bags are in. Two bean bags. I'm gonna have a quick, without getting my welly bobs in, getting it all mucked up. I'm just gonna have a quick look. See how we're uh, how we're looking. Yeah. Alright that there's just a little branch coming out that I'm gonna move. Like I said, once you're in the hide. You do not want to be moving, you don't want to come out just, and the one little twig, it can just cock everything up. You know, you don't want to be after editing stuff, and I hate that, you know, having to get rid of stuff after that. So, I, you know, I don't do it, get it right in frame. So, let's have a look. Right, sorted. So, we're going to zip this up now. Bit of snow. And that ready for the morning morning oh yeah, we've just arrived so light's just coming up what a morning it's dumped a load of snow so you can see the eye there we can just about see it i think we're just going to uh, what i'm going to do i'm not sure whether there's any bait still down so i'm going to nip down now there's a buzzard up in that tree sat watching me as i came down i'm a little bit late um, so I'm probably going to scare him off, which isn't a bad thing to be honest. And uh, he'll think, you know, maybe think I'm passing through. So we'll get a, a little bit more bait down because the snow will have covered that up, and we want it exposed. We want to be able to, you know, to see that bit of red meat. So that's what we'll do now. And then we're going to get in there and see what we can do. Get a bit of snow knocked off it and get bedded down.
you go, you can see the profile of the hide there. A little bit of snow on the top, blends in beautiful, absolutely fantastic. Let's get in it now, see what we can capture. couple of crows down I've, I've heard them they, they, um, they shot off them crows some had, some had spooked them I didn't know whether they were buzzard or not I could hear it I could hear something so I don't know not been down yet it's early days yet hates cold again we've got the full Monty on today we've got the thermals on we've got these on these are working a treat they're ace I do like them up to now they're grand we got some, because my log holes are freezing. Mmm, yeah, he dumped a lot of slaw, uh, a lot of slaws, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of snow last night, which wasn't forecast. So, the light's not bad. We're on the, the trusty old D500 and the 150 to 600. Aperture priority. A bit of light today, so. We managed to get it F8, round about ISO 200, which is good. About 350 on shutter speed. So yeah, it's all right. Everything's um, everything's good. It's not put too much snow down, so I don't have to, you know, I don't have to worry too much about clipping them highlights. And we've got a nice woodland uh, background, which has darkened it up a bit. So exposure-wise, we're all right. We're good. So yeah, I just hope they come down. I say we put a bit of extra bait down because there was a bit that had been taken last night. Probably the foxes have been down. So yeah. Time for a brew. Brew and a fig. The figs are back. The figs are back in town. And I'm also going to tell you who's won the walking stick. Yeah, I know, eventually. It took me ages to decide who were going to get it. And I do apologise. I've had stuff on and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I couldn't think who to give it to. And I, it's been hard, to be honest, because, you know, I'd like to give everyone a, a walking stick who entered, but it's not really possible, is it? This video is sponsored by Fig Rolls. But um, yeah, it's been hard work to decide who's who's won it, and uh, the winner is Ian Warner. Yep, yeah, I've looked at Ian's comments. He's an ex ex soldier who, uh, uh, well, I'll not go into it, but you know, if you want to read it. But um, no, he, he was. Um, I don't know, it felt, the, it felt the right person to give it to. So, yeah, Ian Warner, it's your walking stick. So get in touch, message me, or we'll get in touch somehow and we'll get it over to you. So, thanks for entering, everybody. I know, like I said, it's been a while, um, but, yeah, we've got there eventually. So, hey, they're not coming down, these buzzards. Just seen three of them, all fighting above it, but... Um, I don't know, I might just be weighing it up. It's only dinner time, we've a few hours yet. Had a fig for a bit. Come on. Oh, rock hard, like the frozen.
Hey, got the shot. Wow, that took some time. That did take some time for that one to come down. But we got there eventually. We got there eventually. So that bait worked a treat. They say there's nothing really left on that carcass now, very, very little. And just putting that, you know, that little bit of meat just to attract them down. And at one point I had three flying over and I thought, you know, they're, they're all going to come down. But as it was, it was just that, uh, that one that we got down, you know, that you've seen the footage of. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm well suited with that. Um, a lot of the snow's gone now, but hey, it don't matter, does it? We got the shots that we were after. But it's all about perseverance and patience because in this game, if you haven't got that, you're not going to succeed. You need to stick at it. That's one of the big things. You know, you can have all the best camera equipment and the best techniques and, uh, you know, if you haven't got the patience and the perseverance to stick at it, you know, you're not going to get there. So that's what it's all about. And in this, this particular instance, I don't know, that, uh, that sheep carcass, it was just lucky that, you know, we happened upon that and we've managed to get some decent shots. We've just moved it into, um, you know, a location that kind of suited us. Uh, put the hide in a, you know, a nicer location where we were kind of, you know, nestled in this hedgerow and it's worked a treat. So you, you'd be surprised how close, and this hide, this hide is phenomenal. It's fantastic. I don't think we'd have got the pictures with another, you know, with a with a larger hide, even the you know the night oak, because they just sit up a bit too high, really, and they're a little bit too obvious. Maybe if you put some camo net on and you know a lot more screening, but just to, you know due to this um, the low profile on this hockey, it really is a a belter. So anyway, that's it. That's it for this one. Um, if you've liked it, give us a thumbs up and give us a share. You know, whatever, like, give us a subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if you've enjoyed it, hey, join us for the next one. See you later.